Connecticut Muzzleloaders presents I wanted the new rifle to use smokeless powder, but smokeless has over 8 times the energy per grain which black powder and can easily generate destructive pressure if not carefully used. My personal opinion is that using smokeless powder in any type of muzzleloader is inherently risky because the load can't be controlled. After all, how many muzzleloader shooters have accidentally double charged a rifle? Therefore, to be able to safely shoot with smokeless powder, the rifle had to be designed so that overcharging was simply not possible. And here's how it was built. The rifle was designed using a CAD system, and here is a computer rendered cutaway view where we have a modified barrel from a Ruger 1022 mounted to the receiver and the bolt threaded to accept an insert. This arrangement is used to set a zero head space when the bolt is locked. The igniter, in turn, screws into the bolt insert and has a small range of adjustments so the powder chamber can be slightly changed for different loads. At the tip of the igniter is a small electrode which strikes an arc to the side of the chamber when the ignition voltage is applied. When the bolt is locked into position, high voltage applied to the conductor in the base of the receiver can travel to the ball contact then up the spring through the wire in the center of the bolt and to the igniter tip where it sets off the powder. When the powder ignites, the 24 caliber round buckshot pellet is swaged down to the 223 channel in the firing chamber and then to the 222 barrel. The problem with all caseless guns is how to make an effective gas seal. Here, the barrel and bolt insert use a hard Buna N O-ring compressed between the chamber and the bolt. Although the chamber temperature is many thousands of degrees, the seal is almost completely protected from the hot powder gases since they first have to pass around the body of the igniter and can only impinge on a small area of the o-ring. Because the hard rubber is completely supported by the surrounding steel, it can withstand tens of thousands of pounds per square inch without deforming and leaking. Here are all the parts spread out. The barrel is modified from a Ruger 1022 and mounts to the receiver using a system almost identical to the Ruger. The bolt, which includes the igniter, comes in three pieces and when installed is covered by the receiver cap. Ignition voltage is provided by a custom designed high voltage power supply. The batteries are contained in this pack. The trigger closes the circuit which causes a high voltage and a high current charge through the igniter and into the powder charge. The starting point was a used barrel from a Ruger 1022. The chamber was enlarged to fit the buckshot pellet and was finished with a 3 degree forcing cone to help the swaging process. The breech was slightly shortened so the chamber would be the correct length and the back end was slightly funnel shaped so the head spacing would be self aligning. The receiver is machined from a 303 stainless steel bar mounted to a 416 high strength stainless steel plate. A Picatinny rail is mounted on top. On the bottom of the receiver, an insulated plug with a center conductor transmits the electrical ignition impulse to the bolt. The barrel is mounted to the receiver with the same type of system used in the 1022 and is held down by two high strength bolts. The body of the igniter is 303 stainless steel threaded to fit the bolt insert. The Teflon insulated hollow conductor will mate with a wire in the bolt. The igniter insulator is made from ultra tough ZTA ceramic, diamond drilled for a small central electrode which is swaged into the igniter tip. The igniter is threaded into the bolt insert. This connection allows a small adjustment of the chamber depth to accommodate different powder charges. The insulated hollow electrode is now positioned near the rear of the insert so the connecting wire can be inserted. The body of the bolt has an insulated bushing which will hold a spring-loaded ball, electrically connecting the contact on the bottom of the receiver to this central wire. The wire is carefully inserted into the hollow conductor and the bolt insert is screwed into place. The 
The settings of the headspace adjustment and the igniter depth are held by the small set screws here. Once assembled, the igniter tip is backed out a bit. Stock is also from a Ruger 1022 with the receiver bed modified to fit the new profile. The power supply is inserted where the magazine would have been. The trigger is a simple crossbar contactor switch in a machined plastic housing. Trigger springiness is provided by a blob of silicone rubber and the pull can be adjusted using a small set screw. The trigger assembly block simply slips into the old trigger well and connects to the power supply. The power supply was specially made to ignite smokeless powder and there is a separate web page which shows how it was designed and built. The hot contact in the center accepts the receiver spring contact and the corner spring provides the ground connection. All these components connect together with the battery pack being held down by two screws. Power is provided by three AAA rechargeable batteries. A toggle switch turns the power on and off and also acts as a safety. The LED lets you know if it's on and functioning. The next step is adjusting the bolt insert for zero headspace. After adjusting, the insert is locked into place with a set screw. When properly adjusted, the bolt handle should meet just a little resistance as it closes. The O-ring, lightly lubricated with silicone grease, is slipped over the igniter and pressed into place. The igniter tip is adjusted for the powder charge to be used and then also locked into place. As the bolt is inserted, the small contact bearing is put into place and then the end cap is put in. The receiver and barrel just drop into the stock and, like the original 1022, they're attached by a single screw at the bottom and a barrel band.
last step is adding your favorite site. For casual thinking, I like this particular red dot version. Now that it's together, let's take a trip down the barrel to get a look at the igniter in action. Here's the arc in high speed video. Most of the arc's energy is delivered in less than 10 milliseconds. Well, it worked like it's supposed to, even though I don't seem to be doing my part very well. Let's try again. That's more like it. Remember to see the rifle's website for more information.